Good evening, God's Prayer Warriors. Brother Felix here. And tonight we're going to continue reading from the book of Judges, chapter 6, verses 1 through verse 40. Again, we're going to continue reading from the book of Judges, chapter 6, verses 1 through verse 40. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I give you thanks for today. I give you thanks for my beautiful wife, Teresa. I give you thanks for my beautiful children, Emmanuel, Ariana, Carlos Felix, and Luis Enrique. I give you thanks for all your prayer warriors. I give you thanks for loving and forgiving us. And I give you thanks for all my brothers and sisters that watch this video. Lord Jesus, I ask what I always ask. In your name, may there be at least one verse for each one of our ears in tonight's reading. That would be two verses per head. And when we hear these verses spoken, may the Holy Spirit be stirred inside of us. And may we have the courage to apply these verses to our lives. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alright brothers and sisters, let's get right into it. The fourth period, Gideon, Tola, and Jair. Gideon, chapter 6, verse 1. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And for seven years, he gave them into the hands of the Midianites, because the power of Midian was so Oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern peoples invaded their, the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza, and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep, nor cattle, nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count the men and their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. When the Israelites cried to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I snatched you from the power of Egypt and from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them from before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash, the Abiezrite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. But sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, 
Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. I Am I not sending you? But Lord, Gideon asked, How can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites together. Gideon replied, If now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. Gideon went in, prepared a young goat, and from an ephah of flour, he made bread without yeast, putting the meat in a basket and its broth in a pot. He brought them out and offered them to him under the oak. The angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened bread, place them on this rock, and pour out the broth. And Gideon did so with the tip of of the staff that was in his hand, the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread. Fire flared from the rock, consuming the meat and the bread, and the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, Ah, Sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace, do not be afraid. You are not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day it stands in Ophrah, of the Abizrites. That same night, the Lord said to him, Take the second bull from your father's herd, the one seven years old. Tear down your father's altars to Baal, Baal and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord, your God, on the top of this height, using the wood of the Asherah pole that you cut down. Offer the second bull as a burnt offering. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did as the Lord told him. But because he was afraid of his family and the men of the town, he did it at night rather than in the daytime. In the morning when the men of the town got up, there was Baal's altar demo demolished with the Asherah pole beside it cut down and the second bull sacrificed on the newly built altar. They asked each other, who did this? When they carefully investigated, they were told, Gideon, son of Joash, did it. The men of the town demanded of Joash, bring out your son. He must die because he has broken down ba Baal's altar and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. But Joash replied to the hostile crowd around him, Are you going to plead Baal's cause? Are you trying to save him? Whoever fights for him shall be put to death by morning. If Baal really is a god, he can defend himself when someone breaks down his altar. 
So that day they called Gideon Jerub Baal, saying, Let Baal contend with him, because he broke down Baal's altar. Now all the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern peoples joined forces and crossed over the Jordan and camped in the valley of Jezreel. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, summoning the Abizarites to follow him. He sent messengers throughout Manasseh, calling them to arms, and also into Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali, so that they too went up to meet them. Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hands, as you have promised, look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. If there is dew only on the fleece and all the ground is dry, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you said. And that is what happened. Gideon rose early the next day. He squeezed the fleece and wrung out the dew, a bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, Do not be angry with me. Let me make just one more request. Allow me one more test with the fleece. This time, make the fleece dry and the ground covered with dew. That night, God did so. Only the fleece was dry. All the ground was covered with dew. These are the words of our Lord, our God, brothers and sisters. Let's break down some of these verses together. Chapter 6, verse 2 reads, because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. The Midianites were desert people, descended from Abraham's second wife, Keturah, that we read about in Genesis chapter 25, verse 1 and 2. From this relationship came a nation that was always in conflict with Israel. Years earlier, the Israelites, while still wandering in the desert, battled the Midianites and almost totally destroyed them, as you read in Numbers chapter 31, verse 1 through 20. Because of their failure to completely destroy them, however, the tribe repopulated. Here, they were once again oppressing Israel. Verse 6. Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. Again, the Israelites hit rock bottom before turning back to God. How much suffering they could have avoided if they had trusted him. Turning to God shouldn't be our last resort. We should look to him for help each and every day. This isn't to say life will always be easy. There will be struggles, but God will give us the strength to live through them. Don't wait until you're at the end of your rope. Call on God first in every situation. Amen, brothers and sisters. Verse 11, the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abizarite, where his, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. The Old Testament records several appearances of the angel of the Lord. 
Genesis chapter 16, verse 7. Genesis chapter 22, verse 11. Genesis chapter 31, verse 11. Exodus chapter 3, verse 2. Exodus chapter 14, verse 19. Judges chapter 2, verse 1. Judges chapter 13, verse 3. Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. It is not known whether the same angel appeared in each case. The angel mentioned here appears to be separate from God in one place, as you read in verse in, in chapter six, verse twelve, and yet the same as God in another place, as you read in chapter six, verse fourteen. This has led some to believe that the angel was a special appearance of Jesus Christ prior to his mission on earth, as recorded in the New Testament. It is also possible that as a special messenger from God, the angel had authority to speak for God. In either case, God sent a special messenger to deliver an important message to Gideon. Threshing was the process of separating the grains of wheat from the useless outer shell called chaff. This was normally done in a large area, often on a hill, where the wind could blow away the lighter chaff when the farmer tossed the beaten wheat into the air. If Gideon had done this, however, he would have been an easy target for the band of raiders who were overrunning the land. Therefore, he was forced to thresh his wheat in a wine press, a pit that was probably hidden from view and that would not be suspected as a place to find a farmer's crops. Verse 13. But sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hand of Midian. Gideon questioned God about the problems he and his nation faced and about God's apparent lack of help. Why he didn't acknowledge, what he didn't acknowledge was the fact that the people had brought calamity upon themselves when they decided to disobey and neglect God. How easy it is to overlook personal accountability and blame our problems on God and others. Unfortunately, this does not solve our problems. It brings us no closer to God, and it escorts us to the very edge of rebellion and backsliding. When problems come, the first place to look is within. Our first action should be confession to God of sins that we may have created that may have created our very own problems. Verses 14 through verse 16. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? But Lord, Gideon asked, How can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites together. I will be with you, God told Gideon, and God promised to give him the strength he needed to overcome the opposition. In spite of this clear promise for strength, Gideon made excuses. Seeing only his limitations and weaknesses, he failed to see how God could work through him. Like Gideon, we are called to serve God in specific ways. Although God promises us the tools and strengths we need, 
we often make excuses, excuses, but reminding God of our limitations only implies that he does not know all about us or that he has made a mistake in evaluating our character. Don't spend time making excuses, brothers and sisters. Instead, spend it doing what God wants us to do. Amen. Verse 22 and 23. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, Ah, sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace, do not be afraid. You are not going to die. Why was Gideon afraid of seeing the angel? The Israelites believed that no one could see God and live. You can see God's words to Moses in Exodus chapter 33 verse 20. Evidently, Gideon thought this also applied to angels. Verses 25 through verse 30. That same night the Lord said to him, Take the second bull from your father's herd, the one seven years old. Tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on the top of this height. Using the wood of the Asherah pole that you cut down, offer the second bull as a burnt offering. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did as the Lord told him. But because he was afraid of his family and the men of the town, he did it at night rather than in the daytime. In the morning, when the men of the town got up, there was Baal's altar demolished with the Asherah pole beside it cut down and the second bull sacrificed on the newly built altar. They asked each other, who did this? When they carefully investigated, they were told Gideon, son of Joash, did it. The men of the town demanded of Joash, bring out your son, he must die, because he has broken down Baal's altar and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. After God called Gideon to be Israel's deliverer, he immediately asked him to tear down an altar of the pagan god Baal, an act that would test Gideon's faith and commitment. Canaanite religion was very political, so an attack on a god was often seen as an attack on the local government supporting that god. If caught, Gideon would face serious social problems and probably physical attack. Gideon took a great risk by following God's higher law, which specifically forbids idol worship, as you read in Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 through 5. After learning what Gideon had done, the townspeople wanted to kill him. Many of those people were fellow Israelites. This shows how immoral God's people had become. God said in Deut Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 6 through 11, that idolaters must be stoned to death. But these Israelites wanted to stone Gideon for tearing down an idol and worshiping God. When you begin to accomplish something for God, you may be criticized by the very people who should support you. Amen, brothers and sisters. Very true. When you begin to accomplish something for God, you may be criticized by the very people who should support you. Verse 33, brothers and sisters. Now all the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern peoples joined forces and crossed over the Jordan and camped in the valley of Jezreel. The armies of Midian and Amalek camped in the valley of Jezreel. The agricultural 
center for the area. Whoever controlled the valley's rich and fertile land controlled the people who lived in and around it. Because the valley's vast resources, many major trade routes converged at the pass which led into it. This made it the site of many great battles. Gideon's men attacked the enemy armies from the hills, and the only escape route was through the pass toward the Jordan River. This is why Gideon urged some of his troops to take control of the river's crossing points. Let me read about that in chapter 7, verse 24. Verses 36 through 39, brothers and sisters. Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand, as you have promised, look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. If there is dew only on the fleece and all the ground is dry, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you said. And that is what happened. Gideon rose early the next day. He squeezed the fleece and wrung out the dew, a bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, Do not be angry with me. Let me make just one more request. Allow me, to, allow me one more test with the fleece. This time make the fleece dry and the ground covered with with do. Was Gideon testing God or was he simply asking God for more encouragement? In either case, through his motive, was right to obey God and defeat the enemy, his method was less than ideal. Gideon seems to have known that his request might displease God, as you read in chapter 6, verse 39. And yet he demanded two miracles, as you read in chapter 6, verse 37 and 39. Even after witnessing the miraculous fire from the rock, as you read in chapter 6, verse 21. It is true that to make good decisions, we need facts. Gideon had all the facts, but he still hesitated. He delayed obeying God because he wanted even more proof. Demanding extra signs was an indication of unbelief. Fear often makes us wait for more confirmation when we should be taking action. Visible signs are necessary if they only confirm what we already know is true. Today, the greatest means of God's guidance is His Word. The Bible, unlike Gideon, we have God's complete revealed word. If you want to have more of God's guidance, don't ask for signs. Study the Bible. After seeing the miracle of the wet fleece, why did Gideon ask for another miracle? Perhaps he thought the results of the first test could have happened naturally. A thick fleece could retain moisture long after the sun had dried the surrounding ground putting our fleeces in our in a poor decision making method those who do this put limitations on god they ask him to fit their expectations the results of such experiments are usually inconclusive and thus fail to make us any more confident about our choices. Don't let a fleece become a suitable a substitute for God's wisdom that comes through Bible study and prayer. I repeat, don't let a fleece become a substitute for God's wisdom that comes through Bible study and prayer. Great reading, brothers and sisters. Um, I've actually, uh, 
I've read about Gideon before, but I don't think I've ever read the whole chapter 6. I might have just read a couple verses from here. Because I definitely do not remember um, him talking to the angel. I did not remember the, the fleece. Um, or the fire coming down on the on the first um, offering that uh, that he gave the Lord. On the first offering with that uh, we read about in verse 21. With the tip of the staff that was in his hand, the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread. Fire flared from the rock, consuming the meat and the bread. And the angel of the Lord disappeared. So it's a great reading. I definitely learned some things out of today's reading. Um, for those of you who had read chapter 6 of Judges, I hope this was a great refresher. For those of you out there who may have just read some verses, but not the whole chapter, I hope you guys learned some things as I have. And all the glory belongs to God, brothers and sisters. I love you guys. May you guys have a great night. And you know, brothers and sisters, we will continue reading. God bless you and good night.